is working. Yes. So my name's Hansi and I'm here today with Jerobin Fenderson who's sitting in the audience. You can wave to him. And I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between picture and sounds and this very old measuring device called the oscilloscope, which is not used anymore in this form. Um, and before I get into that, I want to give a little bit of a backstory of how this project happened, because it's been going on for quite a few years. Um, so pretty much every year for the last five or six years, I've been going to this place in Austria, in Hallein, called Schmiede. And it's a place where people meet to just do things for 10 days. It's really unclear what exactly, so it's artists, programmers, mathematicians, dancers. You never quite know who you're going to meet. And the funny thing is that interesting things happen when you bunch people together like this. So this is what the main workspace looks like. It's an old abandoned salt factory, and it's a beautiful workspace. Um, and so that's the idea. You spend time, you see what happens the last day, you do a big show, everyone shows what they did. And the very first time I went there, a friend introduced me. He said, oh, you know, Jeremy Fenderson is going to be there, and I think you're going to like his stuff. Um, so he took me there. <laughs> And um, we, we asked Cherubim to show us what he's working on. And I, I want to show you what he showed me. Um, not the whole thing, but I want to show you a, an excerpt, like a minute or two. So this goes on for a bit. And if you're like me and you have an electrics engineering background, you're also maybe bored for the first 10 seconds because you think, oh, this, is, this was my homework for a long time. But then I, I was amazed how he was pushing the simple idea to its limits and seeing what's possible. And because I'm expecting most people don't know how any of this works, I want to explain a little bit and demo a little bit the basics of, of how you do something like this and what is even going on, what is this device. So um, the oscilloscope sort of measures voltage and so it's perfect for sound because sound is voltage. That's, that's sort of how, you, how even a sound is made is the electricity goes from the computer into the sound card, it goes to the speakers and the speakers move and it moves the air and it goes into your ear. And you don't have to use a speaker, so you can also use something like an oscilloscope, which it has a tiny dot in the middle, which should be hard to see from the back. And when the signal comes on the left channel, it moves the dot left and right. And when the signal comes on the right channel, it moves it up and down. And it does this so fast that you get the impression of lines and circles and all these shapes. Uh, and to make this more credible, I'm going to show you a little bit with simple tools how to do this yourself and how to how you would get into this. So here I'm using Audacity, which is 
an open source, uh, quite all right audio editor. And I'm using a simulator, which I made my myself for the oscilloscope. And I'm gonna connect them. So now I can play sound from the Audacity into the oscilloscope and you should be able to see it everywhere. So let's do the most simple thing, which is generate the tone. So it asks me which tone, sine wave, frequency, we don't know what it means. Um, and so you get this blob and let's just press play and see what happens. Oh, oh no. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> So, okay, so I need to do some random clicking and that sometimes solves the problem. <laughs> I mean, you're laughing, but we all know it's, it's the reality of using computers. <laughs> so, let's see again. So far, everything looks very good. So we generate the tone again. Oh wait, this time we do it right. Let's see if it plays. It's not playing. So we do a little bit more random clicking. <laughs> This is like the saddest thing. So, okay, so it's playing on my computer. Let's see if it's playing on your speakers. And is it playing in the black hole? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so, it's really unclear. Okay, so this is what I want. A sine wave, and if you've never seen this, like I think sort of an audio representation of a waveform you've seen, but when you zoom in and you keep zooming in all the way, you actually see the motion of the wave, and it's also pretty much the motion of the speaker that's pushing the air. And because I'm playing it on both channels, the same signal that's why we get the diagonal line. So I move it all the way to the left. And I hope that's the left channel for you also. I think it is. So that moves the X. And if I move it on the right channel, then that moves the Y. Um, so with this, you can almost work. So what I need is another wave. So we put one more, same wave. Oh. Go all the way to the left. It's not my computer day. <laughs> what? Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> why, why am I here? <laughs> I think we have something. Let's zoom out. It looks very short, this wave. Let's play it. So at least it's entertaining. <laughs> um, so let's check everything. Oh, I made it very short. So we want five seconds, not 14 milliseconds. That's the reason. Um, okay, so we are back to where we should have been like three minutes ago. <laughs> and so now we have two sounds and if I play them, I put one on the left channel, one on the right channel. So I have two separate channels now. And if I play it, it's still a diagonal. And the reason is, let's zoom in. The reason is the signals are identical, of course. So let's just go to the start of the file and chop off a tiny bit. And if I chop off a tiny bit, all of a sudden, like, it's not the line, but it starts to open into this ellipsis. And if I delete a tiny bit more, I can go into a circle. And if I delete even more, I have a perfect circle. I did it even more, I go back into an ellipsis. And so with this program, you, you, can, you can have a very good time for a long time, in my opinion. 
because because you can't just do this, but you you can, for instance, go ahead and you can generate the tone that say double the frequency and see what happens. So again, to the right channel and let's play it. So you get a figure eight, which to me it makes sense because it goes left and right at a normal speed and then up and down at twice the speed. Um, and you can even be a little bit sloppy about what you do and not put a perfect number. So not put double, but like 400.5 maybe. And let's see, oh, put it to the right. So now they're not really aligning, so you get this effect where they keep changing. So, so with this type of synthesis, you can get very far, and you can, you, I mean, I think it's it's really interesting to look into this and play with it yourself. Uh, all the things you need are, are free and online. Um, but Cherubim, my interest is to sort of push it further and see how far we can go. So one thing that's that's very was it was very obvious very quickly is um, you can think about the process completely the other way. You can think about the picture and then wonder, oh, which sound do I need to make this picture? Um, so I have prepared a little demo that shows this. So here. I'm sort of in my head with my finger, thinking about a shape. Um, and then I'm drawing the shape, so a circle for instance. And so you can see there's sort of a sine wave and another sort of sine wavy thing for both sexes. So because we're drawing a circle, it's going to be round. So let's draw something else. So a spiral, to draw a spiral, you see that you need to make the wave bigger over time. And if you draw shapes with corners, then of course the wave needs to be also like sort of cornery. Um, and with this you can go even further. So, so this allows you to really sort of swap the direction. And it's one of the questions that we get asked a lot, what comes first, the picture or the sound? And of course you can think about, yes, I'm going to start with the sound, or yes, I'm going to start with the picture. But at the end of the day, you always make both at the very same time. Like you cannot do one without the other. The connection is very intricate. And if you try to change something, like make a corner round or do a line double, then it changes your sound. And if you want to change the sound, like, oh, I want to have a low pass filter, something like this, it changes the picture. Like they're inseparable. And that's why it's a very good game. It's very interesting for many years because you, you can come up with all kinds of crazy things. So I want to show you this. That's also a very old um, screenshot. Um, and like maybe the first attempt to go into 3D. Um, so we would draw out the shape and then assign each vertex a letter and try to find a pass. Like, you, that's, that's sort of how you would make this. Um, and then, again, you can turn it into a wave, and you all of a sudden you can do 3D stuff. I don't want to get too much into detail, because I lost a lot of time. Um, and so that was when we met the first time, and then I was working on a project completely unrelated over the year, which had a lot to do with 3D, and I was sort of uh, forced to learn Blender. And I'm, I'm, I'm skipping over this, but a year later we met again, and then all of a sudden, like it really took me a long time, but all of a sudden it clicked. I was like, oh, maybe with Blender you can sort of systematize this approach, like the manual approach where you try to find a pass through the object, and then you make sound from it. Maybe it can be automatic, and it took maybe three or four days of fiddling with code and copy and pasting various snippets of the internet. And then we got this result, which was very satisfying. So that's a walking person made in Blender. I have a, a screencast of like the original thing. 
So that's the, that's the thing in Blender. You see the animation, and I didn't know how to animate at that time, so that's a file. just a, a black screen at this point. So this was sort of what really started off our collaboration. And ever since we've been working very closely and we've been developing the software and trying to push forward. So I'm gonna skip over it, I'm sorry. So that was the first version of the software and then we kept going. So year after year, it got more sliders um, and we added a live coding feature, and at this point it's a big mess, but it allows us to sort of keep, keep going into that rabbit hole and seeing what else is possible. And that's one of, that's the last thing I wanna mention is, so one of the very, <laughs> when you do this for a while, you start to try to find lines everywhere, like, oh, what's a line? What could be a line? Um, and one thing we found is that uh, 3D printing actually is very interesting because the 3D printer, when you think about what it does, like, you know, the sausage type printer, which extrudes a plastic thing, it's actually really always following a line. Like, it, like I mean, what else would it do? So, so we, we found out that it's perfect. Like, you can directly make sound from the 3D model. And it's the last demo I want to do. Because I think it's curious that you can turn a 3D printing application into a synthesizer. Um, so I'm gonna take the default model, like that's a practice model, Marvin. It's one of the first things you would 3D print to check your printer even works. Um, and then I'm gonna slice it and that gives me the G code. For those not familiar, G-code is the thing you upload to the printer and that actually has the instructions. So if we look inside here, the software sort of does this thing where it calculates how the head drives. And now we go into our C studio. Oh wait, better go into this. Yes. Okay, so I've prepared a tiny thing, but it's basically not much. Oh, you want to hear it too? Um, this one. So all of a sudden, you get this, you get this curious relationship between 3D printing and audio, um, where it goes through the layers and the layers make a noise. If you play with the settings of the printer, it changes how the sound is, which to me it's still mind-blowing. This type of connection exists. Um, and I think that's sort of the, the main takeaway for me from this project is the world works in really weird ways and if you just sort of follow your interests, you're always amazed. Like, it, yes. That's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes.